Welcome back to Spirituality and Tools. In this second part of Lecture 5, I want to talk about some specific tools that um, I personally use. I also want to talk uh, a little bit about tools that maybe some other practices and religions use as well. Your spirituality does not have to be dependent on one particular tradition or one particular religion. Um, we of the Order of Centaur believe that you can be eclectic and it's perfectly fine to gather little bits of truth and wisdom from each different tradition or religion and incorporate them into your own spirituality. Many practitioners of the old ways or Wicca will have a sword. They'll also have an athame, such as this one. Generally, they'll use a robe, like the one I'm wearing, the one hanging here, a cord to, to cinch their robe. Uh, these practices predated Christianity, and there's evidence of that. Uh, oftentimes, the robe will have a hood. Cloaks are often also used. The whole idea behind your tools, your attire, is to raise your consciousness. Many years ago, I learned a very valuable practice from one of the high priestesses I had met along my journey. And she told me that there's really no difference in prayer in any of the traditions. You are praying to the higher power that you understand. And her way of praying with candles and incense... Um, she probably used the charcoal incense that you put the incense on and, and the charcoal burns the incense in a censer. Um, things such as that were just doing things while you're praying. So that kind of clued me in to a different form of spirituality that... I could take into myself and not have to follow one set tradition. In raising our spirituality, it is often the tools that we use that heighten, you know, our surroundings can often heighten uh, our consciousness. I used this for years as a altar cover and I still hold it very valuable and would use it again if I needed it. It has all of the zodiac on it. It has the sun and the moon and the planets. You know, another very valuable tool has been the farmer's almanac, believe it or not. The Farmer's Almanac helps us to know which days are good for what particular prayers or rituals. Most practitioners will have what they call a Book of Shadows. I've gone through many Books of Shadows. Uh, different binders that I've created and put together to put bits and pieces of wisdom in. Uh, and as I started my journey long before the computer age, uh, things were not as easy to come by before the internet. Uh, even today, I still keep a book because it is so much easier to look for wisdom that you know you have if it's kept in one place. And, you know, books of shadows were often just books of recipes for different workings that people wanted to do, different incenses that they made, different oils, different scents, and all of these things affect your consciousness. They can also be used together to 
create desired ends. Some practitioners use tarot cards and that's a great divination tool. Other, other items might be a wand. Some use wands. Some use crystals and stones such as these. Some people use even a magic mirror and scry with a mirror. And all of these things are just set to basically raise your consciousness to the level that you feel that your prayers are going to the place where they're supposed to go. Christians use incense and they also have many things on their altar as well. Sometimes they'll use icons of the Virgin Mary or Jesus and they pray that way. Their book might be a Bible. Also, um, a bell could be a great tool depending on the ritual that you plan to do. But again, this is an overview, so I don't want to delve deeply into any particular one tool. But instead, I wanted to give a brief overview of all the tools. So you'll be able to find a whole list of tools in the lecture notes, and you get to choose. You know, and you can make your own tools and put your own personality into the tools that you use for your spirituality. There isn't any one set way.